Good, we're back on. Welcome to the Servant Leader Speak. We're back on. Casey, can you hear me? I think you're gonna have to request that you come back on again. We're having just a teeny difficulty. Uh, but this is it's a very interesting show today. Uh, certain things that are happening in the country, happening on behalf of the country, and we want to make certain uh, that we get all of the information to you. But as, as we wait, let's let's talk about uh, BTC and the liberalization of BTC. All the issues uh, that we've been talking about uh, that's been in the news. The prime feeling insulted in regards to the conversation going on with the CEO of Liberty Latin America, which is now the parent company of the, uh, the organization that is owning the 41%, 49, 51% of BTC. And so we are, we are going to, we're looking at that because basically the liberalization of Patelco or BTC as it is now was because the country is, had agreed to sign on to the WTO way back as far back as 2008, in fact, even before that. But during that time, they began to uh, make arrangements. And so part of that was to liberalize the telecommunications industry. And so the Bahamas sought to liberalize the Bahamas telecommunications and sell part of it to a foreign entity. And so now we have a foreign entity, a foreign person, the president of but the Bahamas Telecommunications Corporation, uh, BTC. And the issue now is that when they're speaking about what they want to speak about, where they want to speak about, in whatever environment, they're going to say whatever they want to say. And so Mr. Nair made comments uh, about the PM and, and his desire to have more Bahamians and was he wasn't quite sure uh, and exactly what he was saying didn't want to look into the face of the, the person of Mr. Nair but he wanted to request that but if the Bahamas own 51% or 49% of this company uh, shouldn't they be able to ask for managerial uh, incorporation in regards to Bahamians uh, people are thinking uh, that you know, they, they, they can sit, or the government, I guess, they, they figure they, they, they need to just say that lightly, but they should be able to say it heavily. We own part of the company. The company belongs to the Bahamian people. In fact, I don't even know why, and I mean, I've said already that they did it because they were preparing uh, to go to the WTO, but the fact is it is the, it is the property of the Bahamian people, the resources of the Bahamian people. Now, we're waiting for KCX to come back on. I'm not sure why he has... He was on and he's gone again. But uh, we want to talk about what these agreements of not only the WTO, but the EPA. And the EPA is the European Partnership Agreement. In fact, I think uh, Mr. Winder, who was one of the negotiators in regards to the EPA, believed that the liberal rules of the EPA is even stronger than the WTO. And um, why are we going in such liberal direction in regards to uh, turning our companies, turning our corporations into private sector companies? The Bahamian people only have its infrastructure. That's my view. We have our infrastructure. We do not need to turn them over to foreign entities. If you're going to sell them, well, sell them to Bahamians. Are there not enough Bahamians or Bahamian businesses, Bahamian businessmen, in the country who is able to deal with um, purchasing uh, these companies if we have to privatize at all. I think my problem is when we have to privatize them to foreign elements. But the EPA has liberal rules. They have put in place in regards to their agreements, free movement of labor. Uh, are we prepared for that? We have talked about it for a great length of time. We don't want to see that happening. Uh, the WTO is the same thing. But as I said earlier, Mr. Winder said that the liberal rules of the EPA is even greater uh, than the WTO. And we joined the EPA, which we have to pay for, obviously, um, because just to sell crawfish to, to, to or lobster, a spiny lobster, 
to Europe. We have to consider when we're making these rules, these conventions, what are the benefits and what are the detriments. And as I am looking at it, because we have the resources that we have here, we can make it on our own. We don't necessarily have to join the EPA or the WTO. Because as um, KCX, who I'm waiting to come online to give us a little bit more information, that the EPA, we can get to the EPA, get involved, but whether we have an independent seat at the table becomes another problem. Why would a company or a country negotiate an inclusion in an organization like the EPA without an independent seat at the table? That we have to partner with someone else in order to do business on, in, in terms of the EPA. Now, as we wait, uh, because we are waiting for Ken to come back on, we have had a difficulty. My thing is this. Let's talk, let's go back to Patelco, since until Ken gets back. Uh, Patelco Union, and they've been very much involved in this discussion since the very first days of the privatization of BTC. The union is requesting, based on things that have happened recently, and including the sentiments of Mr. Nair uh, of Liberty uh, Latin America, that the government reclaim BTC or the other, other percent of BTC back for Bahamians. Well, that's my take too. I do believe that the government of the Bahamas should look at this agreement, should look at what has happened with BTC, the losses to BTC. Well, the liberalization of the market too has contributed to the losses, losses at BTC. I mean, I, I do hear the president of BTC said several months ago that at some point the bottom is going to drop out and they figure that will bottom out and then they can go from there. So what was the purpose of purchasing BTC? Or what was the purpose of, of divesting the Bahamian people of BTC? For it to only come to a point of losses. I mean, why do you do business in that regard? Why would you lose, you sell a company only for it to be lost and it's still sitting in your house? If it was going to another country, but it's right here and yet, BTC is experiencing losses. They're doing all they can to try to recoup. I mean, with Alive coming on, on board, that too becomes an issue because they have cut the market right down for BTC. So I think that whoever determined, and as we know, the government of Hubert Ingram had determined to divest the Bahamas, the Bahamian people of BTC to cable and wireless. Everywhere you were hearing, that is, was a failure. It did not turn out like it was anticipated it would turn out. And that is because you have Bahamians still employed, still in the country. So when you're reducing uh, the amount of persons employed in the country, outsourcing some of those services uh, to other Caribbean countries like Jamaica, obviously that will be a problem for union officials. That should be a problem for the government. But uh, clearly, uh, the government who was responsible for that divestment, which was the FNM government, is now in power. And we are looking at where I think the, 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 the newspaper is saying uh, they are looking at whether they should sell the remaining shares. But the union has a different request. The union wants the government of the Bahamas to reclaim BTC for the Bahamian people, I agree with that. We should reclaim um, BTC for the Bahamian people. Now, as I said before, as we have been waiting on uh, KCX to come in, we're gonna continue to talk. Um, but part of this conversation too is what is the advantage of the EPA in the Bahamas? Now, I'm going to talk about a company in Freeport Polymus that creates uh, products for the creation of styrofoam. Um, as I was told, that this product and its uh, manufacturing uh, facility obviously may be responsible for the level of contamination in the water in Grand Bahama. That is a very serious matter when we look at the fact that there has been more than 400 cases of persons dying with cancer. 
not just in Grand Bahama, but in the Bahamas. If the Bahamian people, or if Grand Bahama is suffering based on a company that was brought here based on this agreement, and yet the, the, the disadvantage to the Bahamian people is what we see, not just only in economic losses, but the losses of life. Now when somebody have a cancer, of cancer, nobody really try to contribute it to anybody else. They assume you have cancer, you're going to die. But usually the cause of cancer is because of environmental concerns to a great degree. Some people have genes that inherit cancer, but other people don't. Simply and mostly environmental, uh, environmental concerns are why cancer happens in any particular place. When you look and investigate why there is, a, there is numerous uh, cases of cancer coming forward, you will find out that there is environmental concerns, whether the contamination of the water, the contamination of the soil, or the contamination of the air. In Grand Bahama, that is the concern, the contamination of the water. Now, I was in Grand Bahama probably over a year or two years ago, and I was taken around with, um, I think KCX took me around, and when I look at the environment and persons living probably less than 100 feet uh, or 200 feet from tanks that are filled with oil, obviously this would be a concern. I don't think I've ever spoken about it greatly in regards to that, but the fact that in this area in Grand Bahama, many of the persons, they have been trying to get them to move out of that area because of the contamination. Many of the people, persons in that area did not move out, they are still there, and people are still experiencing environmental concerns. And so that is a concern that when companies come in here under different kinds of agreement and conventions, then we will begin to see issues happening like that. Now I see KCX has come online and uh, we are going to hope that he can come in and we can go from there. KCX, can you hear me? I'm bringing you on so that we can, uh, can you hear me KCX? Are you in? Are you ready to talk? Because I'm anxious to talk about this issue. KCX, I cannot hear you. Are we waiting for you to come in so that we can see and you can come in and let us know some of the issues that has happened in, in regards to the meeting yesterday, in regards to these matters of the EPA and the WTO. Can you hear me, um, KCX? We're having the biggest difficulty and I don't know why. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. Okay. Are you on yet, KCX? As we... KCX, can you hear me? Having difficulties. This matter. I can't hear you. Though. He's indicating that he can't hear us, but I. We would, make it, we would make such a big deal that we make sure that we have this information available to the Bahamian people. This is so important for the Bahamian people to be able to see what is happening here, what is happening, what is being done on behalf of the nation. So KCX, tell me you are, you are coming in now. We are still unable to get KCX today. And this show was specific for one reason, for us to hear the information that being, that's being brought to us by KCX, by um, Okay, so how do I do that? <laughs> Bring him on camera. We, we really are trying to make sure we get this information, Bahamian people, it's important for you to hear. Is that you now? Yes. Oh, wow. 
I'm so glad to hear your voice. <laughs> okay, I can hear you. Do you I'm have a line? You, but I can't hear you. If I want. Which, in, you, do you, which internet service do you, provide are you using? Yeah, we have a live. What would you like me to do? Check. Well, I mean, this is the best reception we've had. I can hear all day. you, but I can't see you. 